Well, hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a building block coat hanger. Now it may seem strange or sound strange to build this project, but I want to build coat hangers or maybe a bag hanger or something. It would be for a child's room and it would be fashioned after one of these, which is a classic style building brick from a company that rhymes with Ego. Um, but this is what we're going to duplicate today and turn it into a coat hanger. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start with the base and that base is going to be made from pine. Well, while some of these measurements might seem a little persnickety to you, um, I've measured off one of the original blocks and using these measurements will give you the closest thing to the proportions of the brick. So for our base, I have two pieces of half inch thick pine here and they are four inches by four inches. I'm going to laminate those together and that will provide us with a brick that is, or sorry, a block that is one inch thick by four by four. For the center ring, again, I have a half inch thick piece of pine no lamination needed, it's straight up half inch thick. And for our very top little nub, I have these two pieces. Now these ones here, I think they're about three by three. As long as I can get a two inch circle out of them, that's all I care. But the thickness of these are 13 uh, 30 seconds a piece so that when they are joined together because we're going to glue these together like this Once they're glued together. We will end up with a piece that is 13 sixteenths of an inch thick So I'm gonna glue this one and this one together And then once we get these two blocks set aside and drying we can turn our attention to our half inch block Hey, remember our trick with the pinking shears and the cardboard? That's where this really shines. Yes, I have my own pinking shears now. <laughs> okay, there's one. And two, and we'll get those clamped up. Well, while those other pieces are gluing up, we're gonna turn our attention to our half inch thick piece here. And this is going to be the middle section of our brick. So the very first thing that we need to do on this piece is find our center. So we'll just do that by drawing a line from corner to corner. We now need to draw a three and five sixteenths diameter circle. So we will set our compass at a one and 21 30 second inch radius and we will draw that circle on here. Now, like I said, these measurements may seem a little persnickety, but it's the best way to get our proportions right. So now that we have that circle drawn, I want to take it over to the drill press and we will drill a through hole 3 eighths of an inch in diameter right in the middle. And we can now take it over to the scroll saw. We're going to cut just outside of the line here. And from there, we'll take it over to the belt sander and clean it up and sand up to the line and get a perfect circle. If you think your scrolling's good enough, just scroll on the line. Whatever you wish, it'll be fine. And at this point now, we'll give the piece a complete sanding on the top and the bottom, and we will also give it a 1 16th of an inch round over all the way around on both sides of our piece. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. I think in the last clip I said a 1 16th inch round over. No, it's a 1 8th inch round over. Sorry about that. But either way, this piece is now done. That's one out of three pieces completed. So we can now turn our attention to our laminated pieces. Well, we can now turn our attention to the 13 16th inch thick piece. 
And uh, what we need to do here, the glue is all dry. We will first off mark our center again by drawing lines from corner to corner. Now this piece will be our top nub on top of our piece. So for this here, the, we need now to use our center point and draw a two inch radius circle. And at this point now, we will take it over to the drill press and drill a 3 8 diameter hole roughly about a half an inch deep into this board. And we can now take it over to the scroll saw. I'm going to cut again just outside the lines using a number seven reverse tooth blade and then we can clean it up over at the belt sander. And now the very last step with this piece is not on this side, but flip it over. And on this side, we will do a 1 8 round over all the way around our piece. Once you get that done, give the whole thing a good sanding. But you want to be careful not to round these edges on the side that our hole is on here. You want to keep those crisp. Well, now with this one done, we can put that aside and turn our attention to our one inch thick piece. Just like we've done with all the other ones, the very first thing that we want to do is mark the center. We now want to, just like we have with the other pieces, draw another circle. In this case here, this circle will be 2 and 11 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Just like that. Well, for the method of hanging this, I want to use a keyhole in this thing. So I'm going to be routing one on the back side of it. However, I need to know where to route. So all I'm going to do is transfer our outside edges of our circle around to the opposite side. I can just do it up on the edge and that will give me an idea of where to route our keyhole. I will also transfer our center mark around just so I can line up the bit. So for now I'm going to head over to the router table and I'm going to route that keyhole and then we can carry on from there. Well, the piece kind of slipped as I was plunging it down onto the base and I got a little bit of a, <clears throat> a messy kind of a, a entrance hole here, but that's okay. It's on the back. I'm still content with this. So what I need to do now is we're going to flip it over. In that center mark here, I'm going to drill a 3 8 diameter hole, not very deep, maybe a quarter of an inch. And then we will take it over to the scroll saw and just like we've done, I don't think we need another video of it, I'm going to cut around the perimeter and then sand it at the belt sander. And you can give that piece a good sanding and this one will not get any round overs at all. Well now all you really need is a scrap of 3 8 inch diameter dowel. This one's a little over an inch long. We can glue it into these holes or you can just sit it in there by itself dry. It doesn't matter. Its only purpose is for alignment so that when we clamp this all together, they're not going to slide all over the place. So at this point now, we can glue and clamp our three sections together and let them completely dry up. Well, at this point, I'm going to let this dry up overnight. Now, there is one more step that you can do to this that is completely optional. Um, so it's up to you if you want to carry it further. I am. So let's see what I've got in store here. I found online a, a building brick font generator. In other words, it will generate 
whatever word you want in the same font as the original bricks. So for me, I've taken my name and then added an O at the end. No, it's not Kino, it's Keno. So if for your child, you can do the same thing. Um, I will post the link to this generator, it's free. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach it onto this one eighth thick maple. I'm gonna take this over to the scroll saw and I'm gonna cut out each individual letter using a number two reverse tooth blade. And there we have our little maple letters cut out. So at this point now, I'm going to be gluing these onto my building brick. I have a line placed on here. This shows horizontal, completely 90 degrees to our hanger keyhole, because when it hangs, of course, we want that letter or those uh, letters to be completely across. We don't want to crook it on the wall. So I'm going to glue these in place and uh, then I'll show you what I end up with after that. And at this point, this is what I'm left with. And I don't know about you guys, but I think that looks absolutely awesome. I love it. Okay, so now you have a choice. You can leave it like this, or you can do like I'm going to. This does not look like a traditional building uh, brick because it has no color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a coat of primer and then choose whatever color. I'm not sure which yet, but I'm going to paint this. And then when I get all that done and the paint is nice and dry, I will show you how we mount it on the wall and how it gets used. And after a coat of primer and three coats of paint, you end up with this. Check that out. This is awesome. Just like one of those building block studs, except it's a coat hanger. And now we just have to mount it to the wall. So all you need to do to mount this is pick your spot and then place a wood screw on the wall. In this case, it's a number 10 by an inch and a quarter. I have it a tad too far in. We'll loosen it off just a quarter turn and check again. A little more. So you may need to finagle with it to get the right screw distance. And once you get it, you can slide it down over top, level it up so that your words look right. And at the end of your shop day, when everything is said and done, there you go. A building block coat hanger. And there you have it. A building block coat hanger. Guys, this project was so much fun on so many different levels. I really enjoyed figuring out the proportions from an original block to make the one that I made here today. And I really enjoyed the whole process of the gluing and the cutting and the shaping and watching it all come together. And as well, the scrolling of the letters was challenging but yet fun. I really enjoyed that and truth be told, uh, when I scrolled those letters, I broke the letter E. So uh, it was no big deal. I just printed another pattern, glued it on some maple and cut myself a new one. It's not that big of a deal. Sometimes these things happen. You can't get frustrated. You just have to think about why it happened and try again. In my case, what happened was I wasn't giving the E enough support and I cut out the entire back of the letter before getting to the three fingers. So when I cut the three fingers, there was no support on the back end and it snapped them off. No big deal. I cut the fingers first and then came around the back and everything was fine. If you have a child or you know a child that enjoys playing with this style of building block, you would be the world's biggest superhero to give them one of these to hang their school bag off of or their coat or their sweater or maybe their bag of building blocks. Guys, these things are awesome. And what child wouldn't love to have one in their bedroom? Don't be limited by the sizes that I gave you here today. You can easily modify it to be bigger if you wish or smaller if you wish. If you wish to have bigger ones, let's say you want to make these as a design element and not so much a hanger for a coat, then do it. Do it. You could make these and have them be drawer pulls. 
for a child's desk. You could make them and have them be, oh, a cupboard pull. Or you could have it so that it's just a wall accent in their creation display area. Guys, there are so many options, so many different colors, so many different ways you could go about it. What if you don't have that keyhole bit to hang it the way that I did? It's not that big of a deal. You could just use a regular sawtooth hanger or picture hanger or that sort of thing and it would work just fine. Heck, if you didn't want to do that, you could drill and countersink a hole right through the middle, use a longer screw and then just paint the head of the screw the same color as the brick to hide the screw itself. There's all kinds of ways that you could go about doing this. And you just need to use your imagination. But if you have a child or if you're like me and like to play with this stuff, well, you know what? This is the project for you. Guys, this one's been a ton of fun. I really enjoyed this project. Uh, I loved every aspect of it. Uh, you know what? I didn't even mind the painting this time. You guys know I'm not a big fan of painting uh, or painting wood, but I didn't mind it this time because it all came together and without the paint on this project, it really doesn't represent the block that I was trying to do. So either way, a fun project and it's well worth the, uh, it's, 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 it's well worth giving it a shot. If you haven't already guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I honestly hope that you've enjoyed today's content. Uh, I hope you found it entertaining. I hope that you're going to try this for yourself. But guys, honestly, more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.